So today I want to do a quick introduction to our Postman collection for Mark's Graph, but I'm, this will be a series of, of, different, of different sessions. We don't know exactly yet how much of them, but at least two or three sessions around how can you get great tooling to play with Postman in Mark's Graph. The reason why is we really believe that there is a strong connection between Postman as a tool and Microsoft Graph as an API that can work together. In this session, I want to go through the fundamentals of what Postman is, how does it play together with Graph, how can you get some sort of data through Postman connecting to Microsoft Graph. But the next couple of sessions, we're going to go and really do some advanced scenario doing chaining of different requests. We're going to do uh, how does this uh, integrate with our own Graph Explorer? What are the scenarios of what to use when and all of that? But for today, it's really around the introduction to Postman for Microsoft Graph. Look at this beautiful animation. That's great. So first, what is Postman? If you've never used Postman, it's absolutely okay. Postman has been there for a long time. is is usually one of the tools that is basically open at all time for anybody that are heavily using APIs or building APIs. Postman is a full API platform. It helps you test, build, validate, work as a team. But one of the parts that we want to focus on today is really around using an API. So it really enables you to use APIs in a secured way, in a very convenient way. Uh, it simplifies each step of the API, and it enables you to work collaboratively around the API. So it's a full platform. There is a free version that we're going to use today, which is absolutely uh, sufficient to do what we want to do with Microsoft Graph. But if you're looking into more the enterprise capabilities, you can definitely go look into what uh, Postman can offer. We're going to first start with a small demo around the Postman fundamentals. And here it's really just to kind of get you used to the UI, used to the capabilities that Postman really offers. And from there, we're going to move on to more graph-related topics. So let me start. Let me go to here. So first, this is, and I'm just going to close these things so it's not too confusing. When you land into Postman, you have a, a Graph Explorer-like experience, or maybe we can say that the Graph Explorer has a Postman-like experience. It's a chicken or the egg situation here. I'm going to let you figure out which one came first. But in this case, I already added two different co what we call collections to my workspace. The first one is the Microsoft Graph. We're going to come back to this one a little bit later. But the second one is called the Postman Echo. Think about the Echo service from Postman as a way to test the capabilities of what Postman really offers. And let's start with the first thing. And I think that's one of the most useful, the most uh, even used scenario, which is around getting content from an API, doing a simple get to an API and get the content here. So for example, if I expand the Postman echo that I have here, so when you create a new Postman account, you automatically get the Postman echo in there. So don't delete it. It's super useful to go back to the basics every single time. So for example, if I do a request method here, I can just click here and let's look at what we have here. First, we have the resource that we're looking for. In that case, it's a postman echo.com slash get with a couple of parameters that are in there. And I have a big send button. That send button will do the, the action. So it's going to use the HTTP verb that we have here. We'll send that to this endpoint, and we will get a response that will show up right here. So what is great with this is now we have the ability not only to do a request, but also to, ex to basically expose the entire response back to you. When you're building an application that 
calls into an API, having this is a great way for you to understand what you have available. So for example, when you're looking into an OData API, when you're going to do your different select or different filters or even different top and limit capabilities or even count, you will see exactly what you will be getting back from it. So that's a great way to understand the shape of the data and understand what you can do with that data. So when you expect a response back from that API, you know exactly how the data is shaped. Though we're not just doing gets, we can do all sorts of different capabilities. Like for example, I can do just a post. So I can basically send raw capabilities here um, to this one here. And when I hit send, it automatically brings it back. So basically that API is really an echo API, right? I send something to the API and the API sends it back to me just to make sure that I'm not crazy, that I sent the right thing and that I'm getting the right thing. So it's a great way to explore the features of Postman. And basically the one you want to use to build capabilities in your app, or you're gonna, it's going to feel a little bit lonely in your app. That being said, it truly really helps you to understand how you can control the different capabilities of Postman. Because when we get into Graph, you're going to see that there are a lot of capabilities that we're using in Graph. And I really believe that going back to the basics with a Postman Echo collection is a great step for you. So there will be a couple of things you can do with here, and I'll let you explore this. I, I, I don't want to go too much into the deeds here, but I think what is important is Always use that collection to go back to the basics. If you want to test something, if you want to understand how to use a buddy, a JSON object to send in your um, uh, to your API whatsoever, you can definitely do that. Now, let's talk a little bit about Graph. If you go back here, we have built an entire Postman collection for marks of Graph. And it literally helps you get started with Graph APIs in minutes to get simplified auth, predefined endpoints, and environment variables. So when you use the link that you see here, aka.ms slash graph slash postman, when you, you get to that link, you will be able to follow a six or seven step process to get your environment set up with Postman connected to your uh, Microsoft 365 environment. We highly recommend that you start with the Microsoft 365 developer program so you can really play around and have the full capabilities, you can go on, do some admin consents on these APIs, create your own Azure AD application um, and all of that. And once this is done, you will be able to fork the Microsoft Graph collection, which will give you the following. So let me go here. So first, you're going to use this guide here where we have actually an eight-step guide from forking the Microsoft Graph Postman collection. You go there, you will be able to create a fork and bring the, the updated or the latest version of the Graph collection inside your own environment, which is great because you're going to get notification when we change the, the original collection, you're going to get a notification that this has changed. So you're going to be able to bring the changes back to you. It's great. Why? Because if we add new endpoints to graph and we add them to our Postman collection, now you're going to get access to them. The second thing you will want to do is to download potentially the Postman agent, especially if you're using the web browser. I'm a big fan of web browser. I prefer web browser to having an app installed on my machine. So I, I, I am using the Postman agent on my machine. You don't have to if you're using the, the rich client of Postman, which is exactly the same experience, just wrapped inside an application. The third step you will want to do is to create an Azure AD application. Let me zoom in a little bit. An Azure AD application. And why do you want to do that? Well, to be able to control the permissions that you will have access to. So you will be able to add permissions as you go for every new API. So you will know exactly what are the sets of permissions that your app might be using 
That's what I highly recommend any developers. When you're using an application and you're using Postman, make sure that Postman and your application might even be using the same Azure AD app. So that way, when you test stuff in, in Postman, you have the same set of permissions that you have in your app. So that way you don't get data that you would not get actually in using the SDKs or using raw HTTP calls. Go through that procedure. Um, something really interesting that we enable with the graph collection on Postman is support for application permissions. You cannot do application permissions today on Graph Explorer for a multitude of reasons, mainly security specific reasons. So how can you test app permissions? Well, Postman will be your best friend. So you're gonna set up your Azure AD application with support and certificate and secrets to support the full app permission uh, cycle. Then afterwards, you will configure the authentication inside Postman to make sure that you can get tokens either delegated or app permissions on the endpoints. You're going to be able to start and get a first delegated token. You're going to run your first delegated request. You're going to get a first app access token and the same thing for your first app request. So the link, I would assume somebody posted it in the chat. If not, I'm going to post it right after this. It's kind of your home base to get started with Graph and Postman. But what I want to do today, I want to show you the experience once you're in Postman of these things. So first of all, let me go to my workspace here and let me close these two tabs that I have open earlier that we're calling into the Postman Echo service. And let me expand on the graph here. So first, you're going to find two different folders, one that is delegated and one that is application permissions. So basically, every request that live in delegated will all be using a single token. So all, you won't have to re-authenticate every time. You just need to use to uh, authenticate with your delegated and all of these requests that are here will automatically get access to the delegated token. Same thing with the application. You're going to be able to do the exact same thing. So let's start on how you get a token and how you can make a call from here. So first, you want to go to your delegated tab and you click here and you're going to find, oh, there you go. You have a bunch of stuff that was already done using the guide that I uh, showed earlier. You will be able to go, uh, you go at the bottom and you're going to be able to say, get a new access token. Now I'm going to select my account and now it just completed. So it's really, really, really well integrated between our OAuth service and in this case, uh, Postman. Then afterwards, you're going to click on use a token because that's the token you want to use. And now let's say you want to go to the users and you want to get my profile. So now you see HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash v1 slash me. We will automatically, if that's one of the beauty of using the collection, we will automatically add to the headers the right access token, and make sure that you're always authenticated. So that way you won't have to copy paste that token over and over and over again. In that case, I have this one here. I click send and automatically I get my user here. I can also go here and change it. Hey, I wanna, I don't wanna have the V1, I want the beta endpoint and I can just click on send and I'm gonna get the exact same thing, but in a beta context. So that's a great first experience, right? We were able to get data from Graph without copy pasting access tokens from anywhere. We're using the authentication mechanism of Postman to achieve a simple task, but that could take a, a little bit of time to get to. So quite happy that this is done for us by leveraging that collection that automatically deals with all of this. And in future sessions, we're gonna go how we're gonna go see how we can leverage that automation of injecting these tokens to take advantage of when you're building other uh, requests. So let's do the same thing. I'm going to hit don't save and let's do the same thing with application. So the application here is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that we're using a client ID and a client secret rather than a delegated token that requires me to log in. So now I'm just going to click get access token. It used my client ID, my client secret. It got 
an app only token that I can now use to see maybe the list of all users. And now I can go here, I can hit send and get access to all of my users that are in tenant. And I can do this on any type of, of app point that lives into graph that supports app permission. Last thing I wanna show is how did I get all of this thing to work? Well, in my app that I'm using, I have an app that is using, that we're using, and actually the app, sorry, that we're using to authenticate. In there, we already have a list of API permissions. And here it's really up to you to decide, to decide what are the scopes that you want to support. So for example, we see that we have user.read.all, size.read.all, files that read. But let's say we don't have anything related to emails or anything related to mail or to Teams. Well, in that case, I'm going to have to go through Group ID, but like we would receive back an, an, um, a 403, a forbidden. And then how do we get a new token? You go into your app, you add your new permission, you do a grant admin for that permission, then you can go back to getting a token through Postman and resubmit that request and you would be good to go. So that's what I wanted to show for today, starting with the basics, the foundation of how to use Microsoft Graph and Postman. And we're gonna be back next week with my colleague Rabeb on expanding on these scenarios. Brian, back to you. Thank you so much, Seb. Great to hear the information about the Postman collection. <clears throat> I always appreciate your demos and all the uh, wonderful walkthroughs that you do share out there. Thank you.